Hello, and thank you for joining us. I'm Bill Harris, and this is Life Questions, a program that addresses viewer questions about life from a Christian perspective. We received a lot of your questions and turned them over to a panel of local ministers for prayerful consideration. And I, like many of you, am anxious to hear what they have to say. And I'd like you to meet them at this time. First, we have Pastor Rick Shear of the Living Hope Assembly of God Church in St. Mary's, followed by Apostle uh, Ryan Benroth of the Well Apostolic Center in Lima, Ohio. And then there's Pastor Tim Benjamin of Wayne Street United Methodist, and that's in St. Mary's. And rounding off our panel today is Pastor Kelly Waltz of Spencerville Trinity United Methodist Church. <laughs> You're grinning and smiling already. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <I'll see. laughs> well, we don't have any trick questions up our sleeve, but, just, <laughs> but we do have some very good questions for you. Uh, this viewer question asked, what do you say to a person who is looking for proof, looking for proof that Jesus is real and the Bible is not just a book of stories. There, there aren't any other 2,000-year-old teachings that still exist today. I mean, we may know what they are, but they don't mean anything to us today, yet we have churches and we have missions and we have hospitals and we have schools and all these things that were built in the name of Christ and it's still making a difference today. To me, that's evidence that there has to be a grain of truth in there somewhere. Mm -hmm. And uh, that, that truth is translated into uh, tangible results in our world. And uh, I, I think that the influence of Jesus himself it's probably been without a doubt, I mean, even Time Magazine agrees, the most influential person in the history of the world uh, just because of, of what he has taught and what he has uh, given, given to the world. And we who, who believe in him and have faith know what that means to our lives. So we become you know, our, our, a testimony to what Christ means even to us today. Mm -hmm. You know, our entire calendar is based around the birth of sure. Jesus, you know, uh, B.C. and A.D. Mm -hmm. uh, but also if you look back, uh, Jewish uh, historians, Roman historians all speak of the life of Jesus. Now, the argument becomes, who was he? Was he the Son of God or not? But very few over the centuries have had doubts about the life of Jesus on this earth. The fact that he existed. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah, yeah. true. Uh, go ahead, Pastor. The important part is, uh, is learning to hear God's voice because, I mean, it sounds like like we want proof it's like there's a rational rationalization about this it's like well let's just make this irrefutable but there's an aspect of faith that goes along with this there you go and yeah. faith comes by hearing and by hearing of the word of god so um i would encourage this person to say well learn to hear his voice for yourself and then teach this person to hear it because when they start hearing him and what he has to say about them and to them, because it's the thoughts of God outnumber the sands or of the sea for this person. Mm -hmm. So he's got things to say. And when they start hearing those things, it'll be less of a concern as to whether we can prove that Jesus is real or not, <laughs> just uh, rather than just walking it out. <laughs> Excellent. Pastor Kelly. And I think it's a perfect opportunity if somebody is looking for proof that Jesus, they are open to listening and learning about who Jesus is. And so it's a perfect opportunity for Christians to go ahead and start witnessing to this person. Mm -hmm. And as you were saying, as the more that they hear about Jesus, then we're not doing the heavy lifting. God mm -hmm, is doing mm -hmm, the heavy lifting. Yes. And using what we share, we just have to be obedient and put ourselves out there and say, well, this is what our experience has been. This is who Jesus is to us. But I think it's great that they're looking for, because in life, everybody is seeking. We are seeking by following different paths, but really the only path that we truly need to be traveling is the one that leads us to Jesus. Yeah, yeah. And that's what you know, there's that void in us that we are seeking for something to fill the void. Mm -hmm. And it's great that they are seeking for proof that Jesus, that means they're thinking about yeah, Jesus yeah. and they are seeking to know more about Jesus. And the fact that other re religions do acknowledge that Jesus did exist. That's right, they do. And so that right there even backs up the idea that he was a person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you've got to just share what you know and your experiences and then let God do the rest. Pastor Bill, you, you mentioned that, of course, there is a faith element to this. There's a faith aspect to this. How do we communicate 
to the great unwashed, I'm saying those who are not washed in the blood of Jesus, they don't, they're not believers. How do, we, how, do we, how do we communicate effectively to spark faith in them so they're willing to make that leap? Because like you said, you, you, you can't bring about this kind of proof, that kind of proof, that kind of proof, and, and, and the other. They still have to take a leap of faith and believe that he is. Well, yeah. I, I think it's impossible to live in the world without faith. I mean, I, I, I drove over here today in my car, which is now 23 years old. And uh, I, faith, I, I, that's you? right. I, I didn't <laughs> I didn't lift the hood to check all the stuff. Probably should have, but I didn't. Uh, and, and, you know, there's been plenty of times I went out. My car let me down. The battery was dead. The tire was flat. Who knows? But I still had faith today. The car would get me here. Yeah. And, and I think that's how faith works. It's not that that it's it's. You know, we put faith in, in a lot of things in this world that we know are going to let us down right. and they're going to disappoint us. And that could be because of our expectations were wrong or, or our understanding was wrong or we put our faith in the wrong place. All that stuff can happen. But uh, it is impossible to live in the world without believing in anything. No one yeah. does that. Even yeah. the staunchest atheist is not doing that. They still believe in something. Sure. And, and even if it's the structural integrity of the building they're in, they still believe in something. Absolutely. And, and I think to, to show them that in a spiritual sense, if you're going to deny yourself the opportunity to believe in something concrete or something, something meaningful, mm -hmm. that, that drains your life of any, any purpose and direction you could possibly have. And I think there's plenty of examples of that we could show today where people get you know, trying to live directionless lives, they get lost by, by definition. Well, and like you put your faith in your vehicle, you put your faith in, you know, the structure of the building, things like that. What is it if you take that leap of faith and you tell somebody, give Jesus a chance. And if Jesus, for whatever reason, wouldn't exist, what are you going to lose? But if you give Jesus a chance in your life, what is it that you can stand to gain? Mm -hmm. And it Very seems like it's a win-win okay. situation to me. Yeah. Excellent, yeah. excellent. All right, well then, there's a related question that, that, that I'd like to get into. We're, talk, we're talking along the lines of faith and the like. Another viewer writes in, I have um, created a friendship with a woman who recently told me that she believes in reincarnation. Um, and the, the, the viewer asked, what resources can I present to her to share my view on the afterlife? And she says in parenthesis, she is not really interested in the Bible. So how do you go about approaching that well, person? I think the first thing we need to say is kudos to this lady for striking up this friendship. I think, I mean, that's a great first step mm -hmm. uh, that she built a relationship with this, with this lady. And I, I would encourage her, yes, you want to continue to have integrity in what you believe and that kind of stuff, but you're not in this friendship just to bludgeon her into <laughs> being a believer either. <laughs> it's not exactly how that works. But to continue to foster the relationship so that, that this other person will see, you know, I see what Jesus has done for my friend it becomes the best testimony you could ever give. We're currently studying something similar to this about how to handle these types of things at, at church. And it's a, it's a study that uses the old concept of uh, Columbo, the detective, the TV show. Oh, yes. If you, if you recall how he, he did, you know, he'd come in and, and then, then he would start to leave and you think, oh, you're safe as the criminal. Yeah. And then he would turn around. Just one more question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I think, uh, what, you know, the premise of that is asking, what is it you mean that you believe in reincarnation? And, and putting the burden of proof on the person that doesn't believe in Christ rather than on, on us. You, you said a minute ago about uh, doing all the heavy lifting. The person that doesn't believe in Christ is actually the one that has to prove that there is no Christ. Mm -hmm. And when we stay open and just become the student and trying to understand where they're at, I think that we can see um, a change in that person instead of going on the attack, instead of going on the, uh, the offense mm -hmm. or even the defense, just receiving and understanding a little bit Very about good. where they're coming from because then we can come back with intelligent mm -hmm. scriptural answers sure. to what they're saying rather than just... Well, you uh, come off respecting that yeah, person exactly. and that they do have a different view mm -hmm. at this point in time mm -hmm. that you don't necessarily agree with but you're with, willing to listen and hear them out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, that way you definitely are not attacking them because if, if somebody comes at me really strong with something and they want to, I become very resistant. 
You know, even if it's as simple as, I think you should do this, I think you should do this, and I want to dig in my heels and say, no. The commission's not to go and convince people that you're right and they're wrong, <laughs> first of all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, the commission is to go preach the gospel, heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out demons, all that stuff that is from heaven. It is, you know, we, Jesus taught to pray, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So I think that as we grow in Holy Spirit flowing out of us, like we introduce them to heaven. Yes. And they don't, they're going to know what heaven's like and be like, well, hey, I want all that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because reincarnation brings you back here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly. Yeah. yeah. And depending how I've lived my life, yeah. I come back as a grasshopper. That's probably not good either. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, you've got the I think I like the heaven path yeah. much better than the cricket life or yeah. something, or grasshopper. Or... Yeah. Well, we're going to take a break here. When we return, though, another question is asking basically, uh, uh, how do you convince a person who's not interested in religion, period? No religion, period. How, how do you reach out to that person? We're going to deal with that and more good stuff in a moment, so stay with us. We'll be right back. Don't go away, there's still a lot more discussion to come on this episode of Life Questions. But first, do you have a question for a future show? Email it to lifequestions at WTLW.com or call us 419-339-4444. You can also suggest pastors you feel would be a good fit for our panel. Again, send your question ideas and pastor suggestions to lifequestions at WTLW.com. Now back to the discussion. Well, thank you for staying with us. And we've got more great questions. Uh, this viewer question asks, how do you reach a person who says, I am not really into religion. I don't do that Jesus thing. So, well, that part of it is Christianity, but they're not into religion, period. Mm -hmm. So that from the ground up, I mean, how do you, so how do you that convince that very, person? That would very sad because that's a big component of life. They're just leaving on the table, uh, your spiritual life. Uh, and again, I mean, we're all ministers, so you know, we would consider ourselves to have a very active spiritual life, but I, I would think somebody who wants to deny that uh, is just, it'd be the same thing as denying, say, your social life or denying your, yeah. your professional life or something like that. You take in a whole component and just cut it off and say, I, I don't want anything to do with that. Because we are spirit beings. Absolutely. And, and uh, it, it's just a denial of a big piece of what your life could be. So I'd be very sad about that. And that, that, that's what I would say is, is this, this deep meaning. And yes, mm -hmm. yes, I live in that world, but uh, you're just leaving that on the table. What, what do you do in the hospital? What do you do for funerals? What, what, I mean, what, do you, what are you going to do at those moments when you don't have any foundation to even speak to these things? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Anybody else? I would say uh, Jesus wasn't that into religion either. That's true. <laughs> That's so true. I mean, he didn't come so that you could uh, learn how to be a good churchgoer. You know, he came to be able to unite himself with you mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, live his life out of you, transform you, and make you all, all that you were created to be in him. And uh, so there is an aspect of, there can be a negative connotation with religion uh, in that it brings uh, religious bondage or uh, abuses, or perhaps this person has gotten hurt in the church. That's and possible. so there's there's a whole nother thing there. It's like, well, they're, they're not necessarily rejecting Jesus because they don't have any interest in it. It's just they got, they potentially got hurt in mm -hmm. the process. Yeah. And then they said, okay, well, I guess I'm not going to have anything to do with that. So uh, I think if there is that component of things, it's important to get uh, healed up and, and kind of lead them into forgiveness. And it's like, okay, let's let that go so that you can receive the fullness of Jesus. Yeah. We have religion, when we think of religion, we normally think about ceremony and rituals yeah. and all those kinds of things. Whereas with Christianity and Christ is a it's a direct relationship. Yeah. That's it's a what's lifestyle. key yeah. is the it, relationship. Uh, Jesus came to die on the cross so that what our relationship with God could be restored. Mm -hmm. So, if you're not interested in religion, that's okay because I'm not religion. Or I'm not interested in making sure you follow all the rules. 
But what I am interested in is my relationship with God yeah. and my relationship with Jesus. And so maybe the key is as a witness to others that are into re religion, it's just establishing a relationship with them yeah. and demonstrating yeah. our Christian lifestyle yeah. in a non-threatening way. That's the yeah. biggest key component that we miss in evangelism. We, so we want to go and do street evangelism. We want to go do mission trips. We want to go do these things. And we feel like we have to have all this religious information before we go witness for Christ. When many times this particular situation, if we just build that relationship with that person and continue to walk our walk, our lifestyles, you said, mm -hmm. uh, in front of them, they'll begin to ask questions. They'll, why do you do that? Why mm -hmm. do you get up every Sunday morning and all dressed up and go to church? Why do you go Wednesday night? Right. Why do you do all it, these it, things? It may not even be they'll ask you the question, but, but, but the thought process right. is there. They're right. observing right. what's right. going right. on. They're seeing it. Yeah, it's a ministry yeah. of presence that we sometimes discount. That's very, very true. Yes, yeah. and, and, and that becomes one of the biggest points of evangelism that I think that we've overlooked in the last decades because we think it's all about this, 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 and this, the religion part of it, mm -hmm. where, where it's them seeing our relationship with Christ and then just simply telling our testimony. You know, again, that's huge when people hear what God is doing in our life, what mm -hmm. God is doing for us. Yeah. And then when we, when we compare, think about it. The religionists in Jesus' day were the ones who gave all the big troubles. Yeah, yeah. They're the ones he, that killed him. They're the ones that killed him. <laughs> he, he, he was the one, they were the ones he was the most angry at too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. And exactly. Jesus was serving others. Mm -hmm. And I think when, you know, there's an opportunity for us to serve other people with no expectations other than us just serving them, that's another way that we demonstrate. And we've been able to, at church, pull in people not necessarily to come to church on Sunday, mm -hmm. but we've been able to pull people in to help mm -hmm. serve, whether it's set up tables, set up chairs. You know, I've known some guys that they won't come to church, but if there's a need, a way that they <clears throat> can serve themselves, mm -hmm. we can pull them in. And then what happens? They get with other Christians and you've got the beginning of hopefully a relationship that can begin and then that will begin them down a path to maybe eventually once they establish relationships to okay i'll i'll go ahead and come to church and give the service a chance just to see yeah, yeah one of my one of my favorite quotes and i quote you know i quote all the time this is probably a paraphrase but was saint francis of assisi who said witness to christ at all times and when necessary speak yeah yeah, exactly. yeah. we had that uh, in, in the previous show yeah yeah so oh really yeah. That, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. 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 So yeah. It's and it's true the relationship that you build you can still live your christian life even in the most worldly situation and the relationship you build with those people it makes a difference it, it becomes a point uh, of they want that if you're living the relationship they mm -hmm. you know even if they don't know that they want it they and they they seek it out mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. here's a question this was somewhat related to a little bit um, different but still related how do you keep your faith in god when you don't see any evidence he is answering your prayers you know, it's a complete misunderstanding of prayer yes the purpose of it we, we don't pray because we want God to do things. We want prayer because we want to change. We, we want to become more, more godly and, and, and follow his example more closely. Uh, God is not a genie in a Bible, or a genie in a bottle, contrary to what anybody may think. And it's not about uh, getting your prayers answered. It's about changing yourself, the situation you're facing. And uh, yes, we do pray for people to get better and, and all those, of course. But, but, when, when, when we don't get what we want and we take our ball and go home, that, that's a dangerous way to go about faith because you're eventually always going to be on the short end of something. Maybe big, maybe something not so, not so big, but eventually you're going to get let down. You're not going to get your way because you're not God. That, that's the problem. And the worst thing we can do is try to help the answer along. Yes. Uh, you know, look at Abraham and Sarah, mm -hmm. you know, Perfect they example. tried to help the answer along, the promise along, and they created chaos that Ooh. still exists today. Still exists today. today. Yeah. It still exists today, whether, where if they would have just waited on God's timing. And so many times we, need, we don't think about God's timing 
as the important aspect of prayer mm -hmm. because it's just like a farmer planting seed. They know they plant seed one day, the next day is not the harvest. Mm -hmm. And if we could learn that as believers mm -hmm. in our prayer life, then we could see a, a, a change in yeah. everything. And, I got a few grandchildren I'd like you to share. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, and that's what makes it hard, though, because a lot of these requests of things we're praying for are very legitimate needs oh, absolutely. that we all look at and go, gosh, you know, if I was God, I'd probably take care of that, too. But that's not that's mm. not where we it's are. Not to where, yeah. It's not and where then it is. God is he's looking further down the road than sure. we are. It, we're just looking at the immediate situation. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. God I, looks at the big picture. We look at the yeah. small, yeah. the here and yeah. now. Well, it's the same way we're dealing with children. They don't see the whole picture either. When mm -hmm. you say no, it's the loving thing you're doing, but the ch kid doesn't understand that. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we, we yeah, exactly. miss how God answers our prayer because of we have expectations of what we want to happen. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, I had prayed to God to save my mom, heal my mom. And I became angry at God, like I've shared in the past. But then the realization is God did answer my prayers. He healed my mom. Mm -hmm. And he had the perfect best plan. It wasn't necessarily what I was going mm -hmm. to the Lord with. But, you know, as time has gone by, it's like he answered that prayer. Mm -hmm. And he gave it the best possible. Mm -hmm. And falling back on that faith. Mm -hmm. that, that you're creating and it just is so important and so faith aspect is so important so we look for one way to god to answer that prayer and then we get disappointed and we miss the way and sometimes he does say no mm -hmm. but because of maybe what's going to happen further down the road okay i would say also to really stand firm on truth you know I think in Ephesians 6, it says, when you've done all that you can do, stay in. Like, you're, if you believe that, that what you are praying for, you know, if it's a promise from God, you know, it's, if it's something that you believe that you are to be able to receive as a son or daughter of God, you know, that puts you in a pretty awesome position. It's like, what, what good thing is he going to withhold from you? If you're asking for bread, he's going to give you bread. He's not going to give you a snake. So, uh, so it's like, I, I can contend for those things. I can stand firm, but like, I'm not going to be moved by anything that is currently going on that says, well, that's not going to happen. You know, it's like, I'm going to stand in faith. And part of that faith is hearing the word of God. So it's like you saturate yourself in words that are building faith for that thing that you're asking for. Mm -hmm. And Jesus, when he taught his apostles the Lord's Prayer, mm -hmm. whose will was it? Thy will. Thy will. Mm -hmm. Thy will. Mm -hmm. His will. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so if it's according to his plan, we're that's, all good. That's and, a and tough I, one to get over. And I'm yeah. scared to death that a lot of people uh, pray like the whole Simpsons episode where there was a group praying outside of a soccer game. And Homer comes in and goes, ha ha, we already prayed. Only one of us can win. And the other guy goes, well, I was praying nobody got hurt. <laughs> and I think a lot of people think that way. If, mm -hmm. I, if I pray first yep. or if I, if I get enough people to pray, then God has no choice to do what I say. And that's, that's, a, that's an awful way to pray. I mean, yeah. we've all done it, but it, it's, mm -hmm. it's not a healthy prayer life. Right. Very good. Mm -hmm. Sister Kelly, uh, what, what do you think about this? Is it okay, this is a, a viewer question, is it okay for a Christian to study various religions? Well, since I studied various religions when I was in college. Oh, that, that, is that a confession? That was, <laughs> you did, it must be okay. That was one of my humanities classes, but what it provided me was some background because my best friend, her daughter-in-law is from Thailand. And so you're talking a Buddhist. Mm -hmm. And it's easier for me now to uh, have a conversation with her because I understand well, the workings sure. of her religion yeah. and where she is coming from. Mm -hmm. Whereas if I'm just going in as a Christian and I'm just gonna share my faith and that's what it is to, I'm not gonna say, hey, you're wrong, your religion's wrong, here's what you need to believe. Mm -hmm. But because I understand Buddhism and what the inner workings are, I can listen, I can even comment about her religion, which is really going to build a stronger relationship sure, because sure. I understand 
where she's coming from. Mm -hmm. And we need to make sure that we can have that other perspective on things mm -hmm. so people do feel and know that we understand where they're coming from. And God doesn't fear that. No. God doesn't no. fear us studying other religions and, and understanding those. You know, we got to remember that God's reputation is without blemish. He's perfect. And he doesn't need our defending. Not threatened, uh, absolutely. Exactly. He's not threatened and he's not uh, offended by that. Uh, he encourages us to be us. He just wants to be included yeah. in us. Yeah, I, I mean, even, even the Apostle Paul used this when he went into the city and goes, this is clearly a religious yes. place. I saw statues to God everywhere. Mm -hmm. Well, here I saw a monument to an unknown God. Well, today right. I'm here to tell you about this God. And yeah. I thought that's a pretty... That's a pretty uh, multicultural approach yeah. to, to evangelism there. Yeah. yeah, I was thinking of that very same thing, actually. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's relying because, on the Spirit. Yeah. I mean, you got to understand, the, as Jesus left and turned things over to the apostles, like, they were all going into pagan areas. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. it, was, <laughs> it wasn't a matter of yeah. whether paganism or any other false religion was going to win. Like, he sent us out with the victory of Jesus which is greater than anything that's in the world. So, uh, but I do think in, if it's a immature Christians and you're, what's the, what's the purpose? Are you searching for truth? If you're searching for truth, then you probably ought to go to the truth. Right. <laughs> Jesus is the way, the truth yeah. and the life. Let, let's, let's start there and get that solid first. And then if you're, if you're learning about other religions in order for it to, to have a way of, of connection, to meet the, the desires that they're having in their hearts with the truth that you have received from the Word and through your relationship with Jesus, then that's, that's a good thing. I agree. Amen. You definitely yeah. want a strong foundation before you start yeah. because if not, it could raise some doubt yeah. within yourself. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much. This has been a very wholesome discussion today and uh, really appreciate it. And, um, I'll, I'll make this uh, announcement. If you enjoyed the conversation today, these same ministers are coming back to be with us again next week. So you'll want to <laughs> stay tuned in for them. And uh, who knows, uh, God can do some great things while you're listening to the Word of God come through these great ministers of the Lord. We thank you for being with us today, spending time with us. Uh, we'll be back again next week at the same time. Until then, I'm Bill Harris. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. <laughs>